Hey guys, just want to do a quick follow-up video uh, about the furnace. Today was the first full burn uh, that I used this furnace for, and buddy, let me tell you what a great job it did. I am so pleased with this forge. Um, man, I feel like a real blacksmith. The biggest thing I've got to say about this is, you know, this has got a, a pretty, pretty big chamber. It's about a cubic foot. And the reason this is super awesome for people like me is because you can put bigger pieces in there. Now, if you're doing knife making or you're just doing a lot of bar work, having a small furnace is ideal. It doesn't use a lot of gas and it does the trick. However, when you get into more complex shapes, it gets to be a real pain in the butt. Because, for example, one of the things I did today was this Norfolk latch. Uh, this is a door latch. It's a traditional piece. Ding, ding, ding. You can see we've got a nice little punch there and all that kind of good stuff. So normally in my other forge, once I make this bend, I'm in trouble because if I haven't got this exactly the way that I need it, this whole bad boy is not going in that forge because my opening's only about four inches. So it's a problem. With this guy, I can put the entirety of this thing, even as it is now, in that forge and bring it up to heat, which makes life so much easier. Uh, again, uh, see earlier we were doing some light stuff, Those, the leaf project, I don't know if you remember, this was one of the pieces we were testing. Uh, this is for a pendant light and this is really cool but the problem that I was having is that there was too much gap in between the leaves. Well, in order to actually mold this down I needed to try to have a form but even that, this is 14 gauge steel, very difficult to move while it's cold. Now, I put this bad boy on a stick and cram it in there and I can form this hot to whatever I need. Uh, bing, bang, boom, problem solved. So having that larger chamber for somebody like me is a real boon. Now, if you're a knife maker, not so much. But if you're going to start tinkering with some other artistic type stuff, having that bigger chamber is super awesome. The other thing that I'd like to say is about the blower. Now, earlier uh, I talked about water column and how it applies to these ribbon burners. Really important to push that air through the ribbon burner. Uh, but I saw a particular thread in one of the comments talking about how it might apply to coal forges. So that's the point of this video is telling you about water column and coal or solid fuel forges. So here's the deal, guys. In any situation as a blacksmith, water column matters. Period. And I would go as far as that it's, it's critical for our ribbon burner, but let me tell you, if you have a forge, a solid fuel forge, and you have a blower that will not build pressure, you are probably going to be in trouble. Now, the easiest way to get away, if you're using charcoal, you're not going to have a problem. That's one of the reasons I love working with charcoal is because it lets air pass through very easily. There's nothing heavy there. I mean, it just blows through, creates a lot of sparks, smells good, you can cook on it, great stuff. But down here, we have a problem where I'm at. Uh, even when I worked with Jay Reekert, who was the blacksmith in Andersonville, the coal that Jay used was pretty much 70 or 80% fines, which means it's actually powder, it's not rock coal. And that crap would stick to everything, and you had to have a tremendous air blast that push through all that stuff. And even now, the coal that I have to get over from Dothan, Alabama, is a very powdery coal, which means that in order for me to burn it, I've got to push air through it. And let me tell you, if you do not have something that can push that air, you're going to have a bad time. So when you are working with a solid fuel forge, especially coal, especially a lower grade coal, you want that water column. So the rule of thumb for any furnace is to get a high pressure, high CFM blower and then use an air gate to dampen it or to slow the airflow down. That is your best bet. Now, again, you can go to the junkyard, you can get a, a blower motor out of a car, uh, you know, you can have your cousin come over with a couple blow pipes, you know, do what you got to do if you're in the front yard. But as you progress and as you get ready to do a, a better quality tool, Look for that high CFM and look for that high water column and you cannot go wrong. Thanks for tuning in guys. See you later.